Like, we know she's good, but that's pretty... Those stats aren't, like, really crazy, to be honest. You think, like, 15 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists? Fourth in the league in assists? That she deserves a spot on the Olympic team? Just because she's hyped? I don't know, man. That sounds kind of mid. What the fuck is up, Internet? Welcome to the channel. Where in this video, we're talking about. We're talking we're about. We're talking we're about. Talking we're about, talking about. We're talking, we're talking about. about. Did Caitlin Clark really get snubbed from the Olympic team? CBS Sports doesn't seem to think so, but let's get into it. Team USA Women's Basketball Roster 2024. Caitlin Clark, Arike Iganubawali, uh, among biggest snubs from the Olympic team. Uganbawali, I think that's how it's pronounced, is second in the WNBA in scoring, while Clark is fourth in assists. I love this picture of Caitlin Clark, just like. <laughs> If you've ever played basketball, you've made this face before, or sports anyway. Uh, the, the 2024 Olympics are set to begin in just under two months in Paris. Dude, I mean, I feel like Caitlin Clark was like in college basketball. She's been in the WNBA. And now she's in two months. She's they want people want her to go to Paris. Like I feel like she probably deserves a little bit of a break. The women's basketball tournament is sure to have plenty of attention on it when the teams arrive in Europe. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> the American, the USA basketball team is like the star of every uh, Olympics. Wait, is it Summer Olympics? Yeah, two months, so it'd be, yeah, they're the highlight of every Summer Olympics. Team, team USA is once again the favorite and the Americans will be looking for an eighth consecutive gold medal. Eight years in a row? Not years in a row, Olympics in a row. I mean, there's a lot of people questioning the decisions here, but we've won eight in a row. Like, leave it to the professionals. They know who deserves, who deserves to be on the team and who doesn't. As bad as people want Caitlin Clark to be on the team, it's like... I feel like there's a lot of people that just want to hand this chick stuff. Like, she's a rookie. Granted, people are interested in watching mainly because of her. I feel like there's a whole lot that's going into that, but <laughs> this video isn't going to be that long to talk about all that shit. Um, but, dude, and I feel like, just like I said, I think she deserves a little bit of a break. God damn. Considering the depth of the talent and the limited spots, Team USA's Olympic squad is arguably the hardest basketball team to make in the world. Wow. I mean, and that's what I'm saying. Like, this, granted, I, I see the argument. Oh, she's the one that's bringing all the, the fans in, and you're messing up by not, like, uh... You're, you're, you're trolling by not making her the face of everything women's basketball, but... Uh, Dude, I mean, <laughs> let the check breathe a little bit, right? Um, heading into the summer, one of the biggest questions was whether Caitlin Clark, the number one overall pick in the 2024 NBA draft, would make the cut. Um, I feel like the WNBA has been pretty much ignored up until this season. And so anybody that thinks that comes out and pretends to be an expert on this topic that it hasn't been involved in women's basketball like this entire time are 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 capping like should she make the cut how does anybody know nobody's been covering this sport other than the people that have been you know you get all all this media attention now and the you know the fucking 24 hour media cycle Involving around getting included in all this now is that people believe that they know what the fuck is going on and most of them don't The answer is no <laughs> Shortly after midnight on Saturday Christina Brianna Christine Brennan of USA Today reported that Clark would not make the trip to Paris and Dave Ecolt of 24 7 sports confirmed the news a short while later on Saturday morning the athletic reported the full roster 
Now, I don't know any of these people other than I don't watch the WNBA myself. Like, I'm not an expert. Um, so why am I making this video? I don't know, for shits and giggles. <laughs> Brittany Griner, we all know because she was dumb enough to take a Benjamin with her to Russia. I mean, we all know her. Um, Kelsey Plum, I know because of the viral video of her throwing the shirt up into the stands that people love. Um, and there's that another viral moment where she they won a championship and she was smoking the stogie and people are like, oh wow, that's gender weird. And everybody freaked out about that. And then I know that uh, she appeared in my team's re freshly retired tight ends music video where she stabs him in the back and he dies. <laughs> That's how I know Kelsey Plum. Uh, Deanna Taurasi? I mean, she's just been around forever. I mean, going back to 2004, Jesus is when she first went to the Olympics. Yeah, she's been around a minute, and I think she's just like a vet, a pro's pro. She's been around for a while. She's probably seen it all. You need, like, I, they say this team is stacked, and I'm gonna assume that Brittany Griner is pretty good because she's tall as fuck. Kelsey Plum has won a championship, but she hasn't been on the Olympic team at all. So maybe she's more deserving just because she hasn't been on it and she's been around for a minute. Um, but like it says, with a roster like that, it's hard to make any criticisms. And, I mean, WNBA experts, that's for you to decide. For me, I'm going to say, hey, they, CBS Sports says this team is stacked. Um... And it's the hardest team to get on. So why would you put a rookie on it? And I've heard the argument, well, Christian Leitner was on the Dream Team. Am I the only one that thinks that was a bad idea? <laughs> like, imagine what others... That took up a spot of somebody more deserving than Christian Leitner. Right? Like, and I feel like as good as we think Caitlin Clark is... Uh... <laughs> we thought the same thing about Christian Leitner. Right? Like, he was a number one pick. I think he... Like, we could have had... Sh was Shaq on that team? I don't think so. I can't remember now. I know... Yeah, no, I think that was the the, the beef. Was that Christian Leitner made the team and Shaq didn't? I think that was the rub. You can quibble with Tarasi still taking a spot at 41 years old, but she's earned the right to be there through her commitment to the program. Yeah, she's been there, 2004, 2008. Like, she's there every... This is her sixth, right? One, two, three, four. This is her sixth trip. And she's won all of them. She's been the, she's gotten gold every time. Chelsea Gray's inclusion is another slight question mark considering she hasn't played a game in eight months due to a foot injury. But she's the best point guard in the world. If she's healthy come July, she has to be on the team. If not, you can always name an alternate. Alternate, right? Like if so, say this chick Chelsea Gray, who she play for? Oh, she plays with the Aces. This is a championship team, right? They've won. Haven't they won a couple in a row? I guess I think. <laughs> like, and if she can't play, then maybe you throw. Is Caitlin Clark? Is Caitlin Clark a guard? Yeah, she's a guard. She's not the, a point. Maybe she's not a point guard. Um, that being said, there are a number of players who can make a valid case that they deserve to, to be on the Olympic roster. Here are some of the biggest snubs from Team USA. We'll leave Caitlin Clark uh, for last, but we'll go uh, Ariel Atkins. She's a guard from the Mystics. Atkins is not a, the biggest name, nor has she been playing her best basketball this summer. Still, she has been a recent mainstay in the program winning gold medals with Team USA in 2020 and 2022 in Australia. She also, she's also one of the best perimeter defenders in the world. The problem for Atkins is that the backcourt pool is extremely deep and she's off to a tough start this summer. Through 11 games, she's shooting a career low 30% from behind the arc. I mean, 30% three-point range? I mean, that's not pretty good. That's not very good for a pro, but it's not like... I mean, and she's a guard. She's been on the last two championship teams. Oh, wait, the World Cup. It's every four years, right? Why is this a two-year gap? 2020 and 
okay, okay, the Olympics and the World Cup is different. Right? Like, she might go to the World Cup to, in two years, like Caitlin Clark, and, and, and nobody will give a fuck. Skylar Diggins Smith, a guard from the storm. For all her talent, you would expect Diggins Smith to have more than one Olympic gold medal, but she didn't make her debut until Tokyo. That, and that's the World Cup. Right? No, 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 the Olympics in 2022, okay? In 2020, I mean. Um, 33 year old is on. is one of the few active players from that team to not make the cut for Paris. And in fact, was not even included in the April training camp squad. That may have had more to do with her personal situation than anything. She missed all of last season on maternity leave and will likely enjoy a break with her family. Oh, so she's... Yeah, I mean, she's... I like how they say her <laughs> personal situation. Like, she had a kid. And so, yeah, she probably doesn't want to go anyway. Uh, Dorika Hamby, a forward from the Sparks. USA Basketball has so much talent to choose from in the program that it's essentially impossible for players who weren't previously in the mix to force their way on the team with outstanding play. So like this chick, she must be killing it. But if since she hasn't been in the program, just like Caitlin Clark hasn't been in the program, um, it's tough to to get in, right? It's it's a it's an old girls club. <laughs> like it's probably tough to get in. The veteran forward has been immense for the Sparks and is averaging career highs across the board with 20.6 points, 11.6 rebounds, and 3.5 assists per game. Damn! On 54.9 shooting? Damn, 20, 11, and 3? That's pretty good. And she's a forward? Averaging 3 assists a game? She's probably pretty na pretty nasty. And then here's Ngambowale, and she's a guard from the wings. Ogumbowale. I'm sorry if I butchered that. Has always been just on the outside, looking in when it comes to Team USA. She has attended plenty of training camps, played in exhibition games, and participated in the 2020 pre-Olympic qualifying tournament, but has never made the final roster for the World Cup or Olympics. That didn't change this year, and is arguably the biggest snub of all. Through the first three weeks of the season, she's scoring... She's second in the league in scoring at 26.6 points per game, and is averaging career highs with five assists and three points. Jeez, 3.1 steals a game. Jeez. Yeah, holy shit. 26.6 plus. She's got five assists and three steals a game. That's crazy. Um, Neki Egwame. She's a, a Guameki. I don't know. I'm sorry, ladies. I'm sorry. Um, I'm not very fluent in. <laughs> <laughs> These long, more than three syllables uh, count me out, right? I'm just not gonna do it. And then even this, two N's? I don't know how to pronounce that. Nikkei? Ah, sorry. <laughs> Fans may be wondering why. Uh, Aguimpeke? Oh my god, I'm destroying that. Wasn't in the mix despite her continued excellence. So it's worth explaining her situation even if she isn't a true snub. Huh. After being left off the team for the Tokyo Olympics in surprise fashion, uh, Gwemeke, along with her sister Chinese, Chinese, and veteran forward Elizabeth Williams, applied to play for Team Nigeria instead. Oh, oh they got left off the team. So then they went, they turn coded and want to play for t Team Nigeria instead. FIBA, Federal something International Basketball Association, is that right? Federal Internet, or er, what's the F stand for? I don't know. Denied the request, as did the Court of Ar Arborations for P Sport. Given how the saga unfolded, it's unlikely we'll ever see a Guimeke in a U.S. jersey again. Damn. So, yeah, she kind of wanted to, she, well, she just wanted to play in the Olympics. And if you can't play for the American, like a lot of pros do that. A lot of pros go back and play. For their home, I wonder why they denied the request. I wonder if it was just like a special case. I mean, it's I'm not saying men's basketball uh, and women's basketball is the same for like uh, international sport. It should be pretty similar, though. You would think. And then we get to Caitlin Clark, guard for the Fever. Why was Clark snubbed from the Olympic team? Clark was vying to be the fifth. 
fifth rookie ever to make the Olympic roster. So she wouldn't be the only rookie to do it. So it is kind of strange she got left off because of all the hype. Joining Tarasi, Sylvia Fowles, Candace Parker, and Stewart. Which one was Stewart? Brianna Stewart to the Liberty. I mean, Tarasi, Candace Parker, I've heard of. I don't know how well Fowles and uh, Stewart are, but I mean, like we've already talked about Tarasi. She's like a vet. She's gonna probably be a. She's probably a Hall of Famer. <clears throat> Candace Parker is definitely a Hall of Famer. She's the most controversial exclusion, at least on social media. Yeah, exactly. Like in the actual like women's basketball um, galaxy, <laughs> she's probably it's probably not that big of a deal. But like on social media, people have been crazy about this whole Caitlin Park or Caitlin Clark. Angel Reese, the whole Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese beef, people are so invested in it. So, I mean, social media goes crazy. Any, any, any time that Caitlin Clark, like, gets, like, snubbed or criticized, people just kind of go crazy about it. While she's on pace to be the fifth player in WNBA history to average at least 15 points, five rebounds, and five assists for a season, that's pretty impressive. For a guard to get five rebounds and she's getting five assists 15 points ain't that crazy though <clears throat> um and is fourth in the league in assists and second in made threes i mean she like we know she's good but that's pretty those stats aren't like really crazy to be honest you think like 15 points five rebounds and five assists fourth in the league and assist that she deserves a spot on the Olympic team just because she's hyped I don't know man that sounds kind of mid she's also uh, second in made threes is pretty impressive though she's also been turnover prone and struggling at times to deal with the physicality well she's probably tired as fuck she's a you know she's a college senior playing against adult women Right, she just graduated. I don't know what year she was, but she was she a senior? So she's what twenty? She might be twenty-one, and she's playing adult women. Plus, there are a number of more experienced guards ahead of her in the pecking order. Yeah, I mean, it's that's the thing. Like, she's got to earn her way. On people want to give her stuff, but she's got to earn it. She's she hasn't done anything yet. Um, furthermore, according to Brennan, a part of the reason she didn't make the cut is that USA Basketball veterans had concern about Clark. Clark's millions of fans would react to what would likely be limited playing time on a stacked roster. Yeah, I mean, I feel like she just needs a little more seasoning. Like, she's not going to get a chance to play, right? Maybe, maybe if uh, that injured player doesn't play, and then maybe she's the alternate but there's some other guards on here. I mean, yeah, this one chick. Where's she at? Yeah, this uh, this guard for the wings, Ngambawale. Dude, she's probably the alternate. I mean, what do we got? 26.6 points, five assists, and three steals a game. Like, she's got to go ahead of. Yeah, I mean, looking at Caitlin Clark's, say what you want about how popular she is and how many, people are still going to show up. It's the Olympics. Women's basketball goes crazy in the Olympics. Like, it's not like, it's not like people aren't going to watch because she's not there. Matter of fact, people might watch just to try to roast them if they lose, hoping they lose without her. It would be crazy. <laughs> That's how fandom is, man. Imagine being an American <laughs> and rooting against the fucking the Olympic team because your player didn't make it. Oh my god, that's crazy. Whatever the final reasoning, there's no question Clark will be a staple on the Olympic team starting in 2028. Yeah. Like, it's just for now, dude. I mean, the hardest team to get on, they say. I mean, I don't know how CBS Sports... I mean, this Jack Maloney guy, I don't know his credentials, but I, I'm getting the vibe that he knows what he's talking about. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I think that, granted, Caitlin Clark is super popular. 
Like, it's crazy how popular she is. She's like Taylor Swift popular. Um, I hear more about her than I do the fucking NBA, the NBA Finals right now. If it, something jumps off with her, that's going to be trending more than anything Luka or Kyrie does. Or Tatum does. I mean, all eyes are on her. So I understand why people are like, what the hell? You're limiting, you're, you're, you're squandering having more attention on the Olympics, but I just think she does, she's gotta, we can't just give, you know what I mean? We can't just give it to her. Like, she hasn't done anything yet. Like, I don't know the circumstances by why these other rookies got to start. Um, Tarasi, or, you know, Tarasi and, um, what the hell's her name? Parker, like you kinda understand. Yeah, Candace Parker and Tarasi, like, I feel like they were like, I mean, for their time, they were the most hype and there wasn't much hype, you know what I mean? Definitely heard of Tarasi and Candace Parker. I just think that they, they, and her, like, honestly, man, her stats are kinda mid. Other than threes and like fourth in the league in assists, which is decent. Five assists is pretty good. Five rebounds is pretty good for a guard. Especially one who they keep saying gets beat up. The 15 points, hmm. I mean, she did, she has had a couple pop off games, but that means that there's some other games where she's not really showing up. And she's turnover prone. I don't know. I don't think it's a snub either after I read through this. And she's gonna... She'll probably go to the... Whatever the World Cup is. She'll probably get to play on that. And then once she gets in the door as far as... You know, in the program, as they say. Yeah, she'll be a staple 2028. As long as she doesn't fall off. Anyway. <laughs> that's all I have for now. I'll catch you on the next one. Later.